What's up, Internet? Today, we're reviewing the ASUS RTX 3080 OC, which was kindly lent to us by ASUS. So the process for all graphics cards now is that NVIDIA or AMD comes up with a chip design and then licenses it out to all of the different third-party manufacturers. So, pare-pareho lang yung mga chip na yan. Lahat ng 3080, pareho, 3070, 3060 Ti. The design of those chips are exactly the same. Yung challenge para sa mga brands, how do we make our card faster, cooler, mas maganda tingnan, compared to everybody else? So, does the tough 3080 OC manage to differentiate itself from the rest of the cards? Yes, it does. And how does it do that? First of all, this is a big boy card at 11.8 inches. So make sure you have enough space in your case. And the first old school design feature that I really like is that the power connectors are 2-8 pin. The Founders Edition of the 3080 had a 12-pin connector. Totoo, may kasama namang adapter. But for me, I, I dislike... Ang gulo kasi namang adapter na yan. Mawawala yan. Hindi siya compatible for some reason dun sa 8-pin na... Meron ka. It's always a bad idea when you try to add something new that, you know, it's not natively supported. You need to have an adapter or things like that. So thank God the Tough 3080 OC has the old style or, you know, the classic 8-pin and you need two of those. I have a very old rig but I was able to use the 3080 no problem using my existing PSU. So that's one less thing to worry about when you're buying this card. Second important old-school design feature is that Asus opted to go with a traditional cooling scheme. Again, if you look at the Founders Edition of the 3080, there's a very novel cooling mechanism. Uh, it looks very different. But for this tough card, ASUS went with what it knows. So the cooling system has three fans. The center fan rotates opposite to the other two fans. And supposedly, this creates less turbulence for the airflow throughout the fan. You can see the heat pipes jutting out of the front of the card, as well as the thickness of the cooler itself, indicating quality. This isn't a flimsy thing, and there is enough material there to help radiate out the heat of this card. There's also a physical switch on the card itself to switch from performance to quiet mode if you're the type who's bothered na sobrang ingay ng fans on load. But for me, I want that performance. So no question, I clicked it on to performance. Even on load though, this card isn't particularly noisy. So all of these are tried and true technologies and you can see that they work really well with the ASUS stuff because you can game at load without worrying about high temps. We did a short meta-analysis of other reviews of this card and everyone agrees that its cooling is quite good. We experienced this also in our own testing because we tested in an open air test setup and we could, you know, nararamdaman mo gano ka init yung buga ng card. But the card itself, the temperatures on load were still very good. So we could feel the heat because the cooling system was efficiently shunting that away from the card and out into the open air. Going along with the general quality of the card is its very solid backplate. You don't feel that because it is a big card, baka over time, or the weight of it in your case over time might deform the card. But the backplate is very sturdy and serves as a spine to make sure that the card remains in place. For its outputs, the card has two HDMI 2.1 ports and three DisplayPort 1.4s. And I bring that up because as you mentioned in another video, it's very important to note what your outputs are on a GPU para compatible siya dun sa monitor mo. Lastly, there is some slight RGB on this card. Very minimal, just the tough logo. So kahit to medyo old school, hindi nila bling bling masyado kahit yung mga fans and things like that. Just a very subtle effect with the logo. And the tough brand is really more about performance rather than all of the bells and whistles. Yung Strix line ni ASUS, yun yung madalas na, oh, daming mga palamuti and things like that. But the tough line is solidly based in performance without the bells and whistles. So how does it do with performance? And all of the four main cards, from the Founders Edition, ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI, lahat yun naglalaro within the same performance range. They're all based on the 3080, and depending on the game, one card might be higher than the other. The boost clock actually of the ASUS stuff is higher. It's 1815 compared to the Founders Edition, which is at 1710 MHz. But really, the numbers boil down to all of these cards being very close in performance. Again, based on the meta-analysis of the reviews that we saw, as well as based on our own testing, you can expect this card to run most games if at 1080p over 170 FPS, 
if at 2K or 1440p at over 130 FPS and 4K gaming over 80 FPS. This is a summary over multiple games and these are results for multiple games tallied from different reviews as well as our own. We like to do this because mas maganda siyang snapshot of the performance of the card. If you're only focused on one game, there's so many things that change per game and per reviewer. The settings of that game, the test bench of that reviewer, if you've overclocked anything in the system, how well the game is optimized. So and mga variables between games and between system review build and between system review units. So we like to do this sort of meta-analysis, blending our own findings, as well as yung na report na sa internet. Kasi hindi naman to ganun ka bago tong card na to. This came out in September. So a lot of people have been able to kick the tires around and see how fast it goes. Pero yung maganda dito sa ASUS Tough RTX 3080 OC is that, yes, its performance is around the same as the three other main cards. But usually, yung SRP niya mas mababa. We saw one review that said that you should definitely get this over a Founders Edition. We had another review that said that the Founders Edition was slightly faster. So, paiba iba yung results, pero konti lang yung difference. And what everybody agrees is that usually you can find this card for cheaper compared to the Founders Edition. Good luck mahanap mo yan dito sa atin. The MSI card and the Gigabyte card. So, pound for pound, this is basically the same performance as those three other cards and usually at a lower price point. ASUS also has a non-OC version of this card, so it's the tough RTX 3080, and that's even cheaper, and a lot of people say that it's super value for money. So if you can find either this one, the 3080 OC, or the 3080 tough, then both are very good competitors compared to the other 3080 cards. I give the tough 3080 OC a 9.5 out of 10, Doc just 0.5 because they are still a bit hard to find now. But if you can find it, there really isn't any good reason not to get it. It would be my go-to card among the mainstream 3080 options. So to conclude, it's a good card at a good price. And yung maganda dito sa tough 3080 OC, it's just good solid performance. No other fancy gimmicks that you don't really need. It focuses on doing things well, being able to plug into your existing PSU, very capable cooling system, and finally, giving you the performance that you come to expect from an RTX 3080. Thanks for watching. And thank you to you guys who have joined our YouTube membership. There are some cool perks to joining, such as getting advanced notice of incoming items and being able to reserve based on the items that are coming in. And thank you to our top fans, Asher Gabe Anima Mundi, Mark Anthony Palanya, Christian Espinosa, John Ruben Ocha, D. Pryshon, ITX Addict. Your support literally makes the channel possible, and for everyone else, please keep watching those ads. Thanks and stay safe.